Hello everyone, welcome to the daily editorial analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team for today's date 30th August 2024. Displayed here are the list of two important editorial articles that we would be discussing today from the Indian Express and the Hindu along with the mains practice question for each article. So before getting into the discussion, there are just few announcements to be made. The pre storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 is starting from the 6th of September 2024 from the batch 1. Along with it, to boost your UPSC mains preparation with us, All India UPSC mains open mock test 2024 are also conducted. So, interested aspirants can join the test series. So, now without any much further delay, let's get into the articles discussion. Now, moving on to the first editorial news for today. In the title, Peacemaker Predicament, the article highlights our Prime Minister Modi's visit to Ukraine fostering peace efforts. As put down by Mahatma Gandhi, there is no way to peace, there is only peace, which is the only way for humanity. In highlighting of this uh, note, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had made a visit to the Ukraine. According to the source, he has shared insights from Kiev's visit to Putin. And also Modi confirmed to be there for BRIC summit, which is to be hosted by Russia from October 22 to 24. So, in highlight of this news, let us see the relationship of India and Ukraine. Before that, let us look into a main question. Analyze the impact of ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict on India-Ukraine bilateral relations and suggest measures to enhance their partnership in the current geopolitical climate. In my last video also there would be a small opener on or geopolitical strategies and you can use that insights and at the same time to answer this means uh, question we can see the uh, ultimate relationship of India and Ukraine and look at the challenges impact and all other aspects such as the bilateral trade and uh, defense economic cooperation and let us have a way forward now let us look into the early diplomatic relations when it comes to india and ukraine in 1991 india was among the first countries to recognize ukraine sovereignty following the dissolution of soviet union in same year diplomatic relations were established in january 1992 with india's embassy in kiev opening in may 1992 Ukraine opened its mission in Delhi in February 1993 as it is the first in the Asia from the Ukraine. Now, let us see few high-level visits. There have been numerous high-level visits or exchanges between India and Ukraine, including state visits by Indian and Ukrainian leaders. Uh, notable visits include President APJ Abdul Kalam visit to Ukraine in 2005, President uh, Viktor Yanukovych, that is the former uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine in 2012, had visited India and other ministerial visits between 2013 to 2019 emphasized economic, technological and defense cooperation. This is something to note. It is during the period of Modi's presence in Indian government. Now, let us move to the trade and economic cooperation when it comes to India and Ukraine. Looking at the bilateral trade, the trade turnover between India and Ukraine was approximately $3.05 billion in 2021 sorry for the day, uh, mistake but it has significantly dropped to shocking of 0 0.7 billion in 2023 due to the war which is a trade deficit but still there is a scope for us to regain this amount in coming years next ukraine is an important supplier of agricultural products to india where food medical service plastics and polymer are great importers and at the same time agriculture products to india like the sunflower oil uh, where the imports are over 70 percent from the ukraine and other products like the pulses and wheat india exports to ukraine primarily include pharmaceuticals which is around 30 percent of indian exports to ukraine and machinery chemicals and textiles. When it comes to investments, Indian companies have invested in Ukraine's IT sector, agriculture and pharmaceutical industries. Ukraine companies are also exploring opportunities in India's defense and energy sectors. Now, let us move on to one of the main aspects when it comes to Indian and Ukraine relationship that is the cultural and educational exchange. When it comes to education, Ukraine is a popular destination for Indian students pursuing medical education. As of 2023, there are over 18,000 Indian students studying in Ukraine, mostly in the field of medicine. Next is the cultural ties. 
There is a growing interest in yoga and Ayurveda in Ukraine with several Indian cultural centers where there is promoting of these practices. Also, Indian films and Indian cuisines have gained popularity in Ukraine for the strengthening cultural bonds. It is also similar to the K-pop industry in Indian presence. Now, let us see few signed uh, memorandum of understandings uh, agreements between India and the Ukraine. First is the establishment of diplomatic missions. There are agreement on diplomatic relations which was established for formal diplomatic relations and outlined operational framework for embassies and consulates in each countries. There are consular agreements. Consular agreements is nothing but consular can be defined as a term which representatives of each countries. Thus, in memorandum of understanding, there are provisions for protecting the interest of these representatives which is known as the consular responsibilities. Thus, define consular responsibilities and procedures for assisting citizens including handling visa and passport services are a part of the uh, memorandum of understanding. Next is the trade facilitation. When it comes to bilateral trade agreements, these agreements are aimed to reduce trade barriers, promote mutual trade, have provisions for tariff reduction and custom cooperation and trade promotion activities. As per reports, India is one of the largest trading partner of Asia Pacific region when it comes to Ukraine and fifth in the global number. Thus, when it comes to trade, India and Ukraine relationship are very much important for lot of strategical reasons. Next is the economic cooperation. It focuses on enhancing bilateral economic ties through joint ventures, partnerships, cooperative initiatives in various sectors including including infrastructure, energy and technology. Next is the defense cooperation. It provides a framework for collaboration in defense technology and training. This agreement often includes provision for joint exercises and exchanges of defense technology. For example, the Sukhoi-30 a fighter jet uses the R-27 missile that is an air-to-air -air missile which has been produced by Ukraine. Thus, Ukraine giving imports of strategic of strategic importance. We can see how Ukraine has the autonomy over military equipments. Next is the technology transfer and joint production. It facilitates transfer of defense technology and expertise from Ukraine to India, thus protect including production of defense equipment and system and collaborations between India and Ukraine defense industries to co-produce military hardware and equipment is very important as we have seen through the uh, before example. And finally, this memorandum of understanding helps in the research and development cooperation agreement which is a growing sector. It establishes collaboration between research institutions and universities in both countries for joint research projects, sharing of scientific knowledge and technological innovations which also includes digital increase. Now, let us see few challenges when it comes to India and Ukraine relationship. First is the geopolitical instability. The ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia creates a tense environment that complicates the diplomatic relationship. Next is the trade and economic barriers. Trade between India and Ukraine remains limited due to in due to the same reason as we have seen the bilateral trade uh, value have significantly reduced. Next is the defense cooperation. Differences in different needs and priorities can affect collaboration. Both countries need to align on modernizing defense uh, agreements to strengthen their cooperation. So, stand of India and Ukraine and Russia when it comes to the Ukraine-Russia war in itself was very different from three countries perspective. So, to have a common understanding whenever it comes to military or defense cooperation, it needs a very scrutinized manner of understanding each perspective. Next is the diplomatic constraints. Ukraine's focus on building stronger ties with western countries sometimes overshadows its relationship with India thus affecting the depth of bilateral interactions. And next is the economic sanctions. International sanctions on Russia indirectly impact Ukraine's economy which in turn affects the trade and investment opportunities between India and Ukraine. And finally is the cultural and educational exchanges. Compared to other bilateral relationships, India and Ukraine have uh, relatively limited people-to-people -people interactions and educational exchange which affects mutual understanding and collaboration. As language 
also plays a very important role here but along with these challenges there are also as we have seen before a lot of scope for increasing the bilateral relationship of ukraine and india in various aspects so uh, now knowing about this let us move on to the next article now let us look into the last article for today moving the spotlight to grassroots democracy this article highlights the challenges and issues faced by the state election commission that is the secs in india focusing on their disempowerment and the need for reforms to strengthen their grassroots democracy so just like an overview secs are responsible for local government elections which are increasingly been discouraged by the state governments where there is delays of the election and as well as the litigation that is nothing but the legal action if anything happens this topic comes under gs2 of government policies and polity thus for means since it talks about grassroots level and also good governance having a means perspective on this topic is very important also the article talks on how many states and union territories do not fully empower secs particularly in conducting crucial tasks like what delimitation delimitation is nothing but the process of dividing the panchayats and municipalities into as many constitution or wards so the word ward delimitation might be a catch or a note for upsc to bring in questions thus these tasks like ward delimitation weakens the local democracy when there is not much scrutiny so this is the crux of the article given here now let us see the importance of secs and their disempowerment before that let us look into a mains question critically analyze the challenges faced by the state election commissions in india in conducting free and fair local elections so we will see a framework on how to attempt this question and i encourage the aspirants to drop a answer in the comment section and it will be reviewed thank you so moving to the role of secs the state election commissions are established under article 243k and 243z that is under 73rd and 74th amendment of 1993 of the indian constitution they are responsible for conducting elections to panchayats that is the rural local governments and urban local bodies such as the municipalities their mandate includes overseeing the preparation of electoral rolls supervising elections and ensuring that the elections are fairly conducted in given time now moving to the challenges despite the constitutional backup secs have been increasingly disempowered by the state governments for example where state governments uh, have interfered with the functioning of the secs leading to delay in elections again for example in karnataka the sec faced delays and legal challenges while trying to conduct local elections as the state government failed to fulfill its commitment to delimitation and as well as reservation processes uh, there is another example in andhra pradesh for instance the supreme court struck down an ordinance passed by the andhra pradesh government that had hindered the sec's ability to conduct local elections these delays and legal battles have dropped the functioning of the local governments and it makes to question the ethicality of the governance and judiciary at the same time by the people as they it is them who have elected next let us look at the systematic issues with the secs the comptroller and auditor general that is according to the cag report revealed that 70% of the urban local governments did not have elected councils at the time of the audit this indicates that there is a widespread issue as the scs are not able to ensure timely elections and the legitimacy of the local governments are questioned next out of 34 states and union territories in india only 11 have empowered their secs to conduct war delimitation this means that the majority of the population in this region is underrepresented in local governance thus it weakens the democratic process now let us see the need for electoral reforms fair regular elections are a non negotiable thing when it comes to grassroots democracy thus to ensure this the secs must be given same level of autonomy and authority as the election commission of india which oversees the national and state elections next is 74th constitutional amendment act should be revised as secs need to be made more independent this could include the formation of 
three member SEC compromising chief minister, leader of opposition in the legislative assembly and the chief justice of high court. Thus having these people from the aspects of the Indian judiciary which can promote legislation, execution and the judiciary or policy intervention. This can prevent the state government from having undue influence over the SECs. Next is mandating delimitation and reservations. What delimitation and seat reservation should be conducted at fixed intervals, uh, for example, to say every 10 years to avoid delay by the state government. This would ensure elections are conducted fairly. And finally, to entrust SEC with key election. SECs should be responsible for electing the mayors, presidents and other key positions in the local government. This would reduce the possibility of state government manipulating the election process for their own benefits of having critical roles. Thus, through this way forward, we can stress that there is a need for empowering SEC to ensure local government functioning effectively and democratically. SEC being autonomous, free from state government and with no interference can make it fully empowered for local elections as local elections and people around it are directly related to the people of reality that is the people who are in the grassroots levels like us thus this would strengthen accountability of the government and increase the representation to the people they serve and that's it for today's articles thank you for watching the video don't forget to give a like comment and share and to further not to miss any other content subscribe to our channel thank you and have a nice day